Ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the next session, how to position debt funds. When it comes to suggesting debt funds to our clients, we have often thought, we often have thought on uh, the suitability for short term, middle term and long term and the reasons. Today we have with us Mr. Manish Bantia, Senior Fund Manager, Fixed Income, ICICI Prudential AMC, who will tell us how to position debt funds to our clients. Well, he joined ICICI Prudential AMC in uh, October 2005. He's a fund manager in the fixed income function of the AMC and anchors key roles which includes fixed income trading, credit analysis and product development. He also advises Indian fixed income fund uh, domiciled in Japan. He has over 16 years of rich experience in the Indian capital markets. And with that, I'm going to hand over the stage to his expertise. There you go, sir. Would you want to put your hands together and welcome him here? Uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, good to see such a big audience. Uh, been interacting with all of you, a lot of people, last two years during COVID, but I think this kind of audience is a different experience altogether. So thanks all of you for joining you know, uh, here in this Confluence event. The last, uh, you know, one, one and a half years has been a very, I think, uh, dull time for fixed income. Uh, and the reason why it was a dull time was because fixed income flows in cycles. And there are periods when, you know, the interest, interest rates are low. And when interest rates are low, you know, generally your fund YTMs are depressed. And therefore, it's very difficult to make, uh, you know, returns on the fixed income segment. But these are cycles. And therefore, the beauty of the cycles is when you know, the dull period gets past, the bright sun appears. And I think the bright sun for fixed income has started to appear. So let me take you through uh, you know, the economic cycles. And I'll take some time to help you understand why this is important. Not only from fixed income perspective, but you'll also understand why it is important to understand from an asset class perspective. Now, economic cycle flows into you know, a circle. It starts with a recovery. If I have to you know, tell you about a recovery cycle, the last one and a half, two years has been a recovery cycle after the COVID period. And what happens in the recovery cycle? In the recovery cycle, the economy is generally very weak and it requires stimulus from both the government and the central bank. So what we saw was the central bank cut interest rates in this period. The government stimulated the economy through a large spending. So what we saw was a very dull period of 2020, and as things passed into 2021, we started to see green shoots. And as COVID has now passed us, we started to see economy move from, from this recovery phase to the expansion phase. And this is the most beautiful phase of the economy. It's the happiest place to be in. When things are moving up, things are good. There are no macro challenges as such. And in this phase of the economic cycle, your growth comes back, and growth is good. Once you are through this phase, and this phase can last, it can last from one, two years to even five, 10 years, depending on how the policy, policies are. The longer the policies are uh, in the right direction, you will have this phase lasting for a very long time. But once you are through this phase, you will enter a late cycle. And that late cycle is nothing but cycle of excesses. If you remember back in 2010 to 2013, we had this problem of late cycle. And in this problem, normally inflation goes up. You have balance sheets of banks which are in the issues. You have macro issues like current account deficits which moves up too much. So some of these start to have an impact on the cycle. And in this part of the cycle is where RBI tightens interest rates so that the economic cycle comes back to a you know, neutral phase. Once that is done, you come to a more slower phase of the economic growth, and the Reserve Bank of India will start to cut interest rates again. Um, we have moved from a recovery cycle to expansion cycle. Where is US right now? US is in a late cycle. Very clearly, they have capacity utilizations which are full. Employment is a problem because the employment is full, wage growth is very high, and they're seeing very high inflation. So Federal Reserve is tightening interest rates at this point of time. India had a very long period of slow growth, lasting from almost about 2013-14 to 2020. Look at different asset markets. Look at what happened to real estate in this phase, the slowdown phase. 
the real estate sector kept on deleveraging. The corporate sector went on deleveraging. The corporate credit growth went down. And now it's exactly opposite as we have entered the expansion cycle. So what happens in the expansion cycle? I explained this. In the expansion cycle, the interest rates starts to normalize. So while we've seen that RBI cut interest rates in the recovery cycle, they're now moving the interest rates back to neutral. Why? Because the economy is also normalizing. And what are the uh, aspects of the economy when you see a normalization? You'd see that private sector is back. The first you know, green shoots in a private sector is that the household consumption they starts to improve. The corporate working capital cycle, it starts to improve. That is the first phase. The second phase of it is when corporates feel that capacity utilizations are now full, they should invest. So the next phase of it will be the investment cycle. We haven't reached there yet, but yes, the working capital sector demand has already started to pick up. So, uh, so uh, in this phase, uh, I, if I have to highlight pointers, if you have to look at, the pointers are that credit growth is very strong. We've seen that over the last five years, credit growth was almost sub 10%. Now we're seeing credit growth back to 14%. Effectively, that everybody requires money because they have a requirement to grow. The second point is that private sector growth starts to stabilize. And you can see it in many areas, that private sector growth, which was very weak uh, over the last uh, so many years, has started to stabilize. The third is the capacity utilizations, which were you know, very low. The capacity utilizations are getting fuller. Uh, the policy before this, RBI already said that you know, capacity utilizations already moved to neutral. So we're not very far away when you know, the companies will have to invest to so allow the economy to grow. The fourth thing is that liquidity, which was very, very easy, that liquidity starts to neutralize. And I think this is a very important thing to understand. When liquidity is easy, asset class behave in a way. When liquidity is tight, the behavior of the asset class changes. I'll also give example of you know, equity over here. Equity does very well in the recovery phase, and I'll uh, tell you why. In a recovery phase, generally, you are moving in a positive earning cycle. In a positive earning cycle, your EPS keeps expanding. And at the same time, your discounting factor, which is the cost of equity, that is very low. Because RBI's interest rates are low, and liquidity is easy. Risk premiums are so very low. So you have the benefit of both the numerator and the denominator, which allows the equity markets to generate very high returns. Now, when you enter the second phase, which is the expansion phase, your EPS starts to grow. But your cost of equity, which is dependent on the interest rates, that starts to move up. So your return on equity and the return of debt in the expansion phase, they're not very different. So how do you invest? So while in the first part, which is uh, you know, the recovery cycle, maximum allocation should go to equity, in the second phase, when you enter the expansion phase, I think that makes a lot of sense for investors. Because one, equity at some point of time will be plagued with high valuations. Uh, if I look at the current uh, equity valuations, we run some you know, earnings bond yield models. Uh, it clearly suggests that between uh, bond yields and the earning yields of equity markets, from a long-term perspective, bond yields look much more attractive than equity from a just pure valuation perspective. So as you enter this expansion phase, your bond yields move up. And therefore, from an investor's portfolio perspective, debt becomes a very important part of portfolio allocation. The second part of it is, this expansion cycle is a very positive credit cycle. So normally, you would have seen that uh, you know, in the last two to three years, four years, we've been seeing challenges on the credit side. It started with 2018 when it was the NBFC challenge, and then it per percolated to you know, some other parts and areas. The beauty is that in this last four years, the balance sheets have got deleveraged, which effectively means that debt on the corporate balance sheets is very low. And which is what helps one corporates to borrow and invest. And because the starting point is so low, when they leverage, the issue of balance sheets, they don't come up. The issue of balance sheets will only come up in the latter part, which is a late cycle, which is very far, far from where we are. So two things. One, as the corporates would want to take more money to invest, you will find better spreads on corporate papers. So effectively meaning that your yields on corporate papers, that will start to improve. And secondly, the RBI interest rates itself will start to look much better, which has already happened. So if you look at 
the current context, what used to be a you know 3%, 4%, 5% kind of a yield market has become a 7-8% yield market. So from broader context, the effective returns on fixed income, which was around 3 to 5% a year back, that has moved to 7 to 9% in my view. The last phase, which is, uh, you know, when RBI will start to cut rates again, when, you know, there are excesses in the economy, I think that's very far away. So how to position yourself in terms of portfolios, in terms of fixed income, where should you be? So uh, clearly, uh, you know, if you look at the fixed income, any bond, there are two parts of returns. One is the returns which you accrue from pure accrual, that is the coupon. And the second part of it is when bond prices move, there is either a capital appreciation or a capital depreciation. Now, uh, if you look at a period where you know, interest rates are falling, in a falling interest rate scenario, what you get is the 10-year yields move down. You will suddenly see that a 8% 10-year bond yield will move to 7%, 6%. That generates a lot of capital appreciation on the client's portfolios. So the major return in that environment comes from capital appreciation. Then there are periods of time when interest rates are rising. That is what we've seen in this part of the cycle. And it will continue to remain stable for a longer period of time. In this period, the maximum return for the bonds come from your coupon, not from your capital gains. So which effectively means that in this part of the economic cycle, you will have to concentrate on the fund YTMs. I remember everybody used to talk about YTMs till 2018. And now people have forgotten that word of YTM. I think you should think about it again. Because this is what will contribute to investors' portfolio. When you look at portfolios, ask for the YTM of the portfolios. Look for portfolios which have a better YTM, of course, on a risk-adjusted basis. Because when interest rates are stable for a long period of time, and the corporate credit growth is a good cycle, your generally credit assets, they make you the most money. While I understand the last two years, three years experience in credit has been subnormal for a lot of investors, but at ICIC Prudential, we've tried to manage credit risk in the best possible manner. And effectively, we feel that this is the best time to come back to the credit risk category. So if you look at the way in which the mutual fund market or the bond market has changed, I'll just you give you a very uh, you know, simple example. Do you know what is the FD rate right now for SBI, uh, you know, some of the other big uh, private sector banks? So you look at it, it's still 5.65 on an average. Look at what has happened to RBI repo rate. It has moved from 4% to 590. And look at what has happened to the uh, corporate bond market and the SDL market the rates have gone by 202 basis points. So effectively against a 565 of FD, the markets are already giving you a 7.5% of yields. And if you look at the double A segment, the yields are now more than 8%. If you look at the single A segment, the yields are ahead of 9%. So effectively it's very different from uh, you know, the banking market. And do you know what is the size of the uh, bank deposit market? It is 1,70,000 crores. So look at the kind of opportunity you have in fixed income and the kind of change you can bring in your client portfolios when you allocate their fixed income portfolios well. I still feel the equity mutual fund, the equity direct investor is still a much smaller portion compared to this traditional invest investment of fixed deposit. And you all know mutual fund investments are tax efficient and they're very transparent. So this is a very big opportunity for all of you. And this is a cycle where you should go after investors put, you know, getting their money into fixed income asset class. So, uh, you know, in terms of different funds at ICIC Prudential, you know, you can see how YTMs have changed. Uh, you know, some of the, the two funds which, you know, we like at this point of time, one is the all-season bond fund. Uh, this fund has had now a, you know, a long track record history, eight years, and, uh, you know, uh, the fund, the idea of the fund is that fund changes its composition based on the market environment. It behaves like a duration fund at certain point of time. It behaves like an accrual fund at different point of time. So you get the best of the both worlds by investing in this. And if you're a long-term investor, you capture these economic cycles well. What I explained to you in terms of the recovery cycle, in terms of 
you know, the expansion cycle, late cycle, you get the benefit of falling interest rates, you get the benefit of rising interest rates, all of that in this product. And the other product which, you know, we like a lot in this part of the cycle is the credit risk fund. And, uh, you know, as I said, the maximum returns for the next two years is going to come through accrual. And therefore, you should concentrate on the YTMs of the fund. I think the YTMs will keep going up as we start to see the investment cycle in the country come back. So, uh, so in short, uh, you know, I, I, I would just want to, uh, you know, repeat, uh, we are in a good phase of fixed income. We've ended that dull phase. In terms of portfolio allocation, you should concentrate on, you know, investors having a decent portion of fixed income on your portfolios. Uh, look at the sentiments. The sentiments of the fixed income markets are very negative. And, you know, we've been a follower of counter-cyclicality. And the counter cyclicality says that when the one year return is you know depressed, you should uh, you know look for uh, you know better uh, you know you should look at that asset class from a much uh, you know uh, better perspective. So I'll stop here. Thank you all for listening to me uh, and happy investing. Thank you so much.